Hey, good morning, Choice Residential. Hope your day's off to a great start. So today I want to talk about explaining agency to a new lead. Now, really, we're talking about a new internet lead uh, type of prospect or type of lead who you haven't had an opportunity to build rapport with yet. If you get a referral or a past client, something of that nature, uh, oftentimes you'll be able to have a buyer consultation in a very low pressure uh, environment where you can explain the rules and explain that you need to have agency signed uh, in order to show property and ultimately uh, make an offer. But if you receive an internet lead, oftentimes the course of action is you're trying to just meet them out of the property so that you can connect with them in person and start to build that rapport, build that trust, and then hopefully work with them to uh, help them purchase a home. But of course, now you need to have them sign something. So uh, the way I see it, there are kind of two options on how you approach these types of leads uh, in terms of getting, getting them to understand this agreement uh, and getting them to sign it. Uh, also keep in mind that you have two options here in terms of agency agreements. You can use the non-exclusive buyer agency, Form 203, or the uh, Form 201, which is the exclusive buyer agency that most of you have used for most of your career. Now, if you're not very familiar with Form 203, make sure you go back and watch the form video uh, where I cover in detail the use of that form. So back to a new lead uh, who you have not had an opportunity to truly build rapport with, kind of two options. Uh, the best course of action is to try to get them to sign the exclusive buyer agency. That's the form that truly protects you and your time and ensures that you're going to get paid for your work. Oftentimes with these new leads, we might be in a position where form 203, the non-exclusive form, is maybe the, the lower pressure of the two forms because it actually states that the buyer is not responsible for paying the firm's commission or ensuring that the firm gets paid. It provides the agent with the opportunity to unilaterally terminate the agency agreement if no compensation is being offered and if the buyer isn't willing to step in and pay it. So it provides some protection to us in terms of not working uh, through the end of the transaction for free, but it does pose the risk of us showing homes along the way uh, and then ultimately not getting compensated. So the, the two kind of options you have are to uh, pitch this to the buyer, to this lead, uh, before ever actually meeting them at the property. <clears throat> so if someone contacts you and they want to go see 123 Main Street, um, based on how the conversation goes with that prospect, uh, you can explain this agency situ uh, situation to them on the phone and say, um, hey, just want to let you know there is a new federal uh, national rule that requires agents to have uh, an agency agreement in place before actually uh, showing any homes to a buyer. Um, so we have to comply with that. It's a federal regulation. Um, and so, uh, but what I'm going to, this does not obligate you to actually pay me anything, but it, the, the whole purpose of this is to create transparency so that consumers and agents know how they're working together. So I'm going to send that form over to you before we meet out at the house. If you could just sign it and get it back to me, that would be amazing. Uh, it's just going to be for this one property. And again, as I mentioned, you can see the first line of paragraph three. Uh, it does not obligate you to pay me anything. This is just to meet a compliance standard where we have to have this in place before showing a property. So if that feels comfortable and you can get the buyer to sign it ahead of time, that's great. Send it to them, uh, have them sign it, meet them out at the property and show it to them. If you get the feeling on that phone conversation that you can uh, push for the exclusive buyer agency, even better, go for that. Um, uh, you know, establish your value over the phone, send them that form and if they'll sign it, fantastic. But just know that you have this backup plan of the non-exclusive agreement uh, that allows you to meet the standard of compliance so that you can get in there, show them the home and start to build that rapport and trust and convey your value in person while you're touring the home, which is going to be much easier than over an initial phone call. So another option rather than going through all of that on the phone uh, would be to actually go ahead and schedule the appointment to see the house. And then when you meet them at the home, you would want to just have a non-exclusive or exclusive if you wanted to go that route. But again, I think oftentimes we'll be operating with the non-exclusive in these situations uh, because it does not obligate the buyer to pay the commission. So uh, you can show up with that non-exclusive form. I would actually take a highlighter uh, or highlight it on your PDF uh, application on your computer and print the form off, but highlight that first sentence that says that the buyer is not obligated to pay the firm nor ensure that the firm gets paid. Uh, that way you're taking uh, some of the defense away from the buyer who, who may feel um, like they're being you know, 
pushed into something that they may regret later. Uh, you want to really point out the fact that they are not having to pay uh, any compensation. So have that sentence actually highlighted and say, hey, uh, then go through the, the little spiel there where you're explaining this is a, a new federal regulation. We have to have this agency agreement in place before I can even open the door for you. Uh, but it's a good thing for you as a consumer. This is meant to provide transparency uh, with real estate agents and uh, potential buyers on how agency relationships work. So this really is a good thing for you. And again, it doesn't obligate you to pay me or my firm anything. Um, if they refuse, then of course, you're just kind of stuck in a situation where you have to explain, I'm sorry, uh, you know, this is something that all real estate agents, all realtors are, are um, operating under. Um, if you don't want to sign it, I, I understand, uh, but just know I literally cannot show you the home without this agreement in place. Uh, and hopefully that uh, understanding for most buyers, uh, they will get it. They'll be able to read that first sentence, sign it, move in, uh, show the home, and you'll be able to continue to build that trust rapport and convey your value to those buyers. So that's kind of how I see uh, what the possible uh, paths are with internet leads as they come in. Again, if you can get them into the office, do a full buyer consultation. It's a much safer and better environment for you to convey your value and explain the process of needing to sign an agency agreement before touring homes. Uh, it's a much better environment to do that. But with internet leads, sometimes uh, the best course of action is to just meet them out at the house. So just know you have these two options, practice those scripts, envision yourself in those scenarios and how you're gonna discuss it with that prospect and you'll do just fine. As always, if you have other tips or scripts or things that you think would help other agents, please put them in the comments below to help out your fellow agents. Otherwise, I'm just a phone call away. Take care.